Hey, tell me it's five. And is this Thursday? Absolutely. And we're live. We're frankly speaking, by the way. Where truth is our mission, rally our realm. Said as we see it and frankly as well, we have a very, very special guest tonight. The Reverend, or not the Reverend, the Rabbi. The <laughs> Rabbi Ira Axelrod. Good evening. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Pleasure along, to be here. Along with the sages now, <laughs> Malcolm, Ralph, and Avram, and our new Maxine. I see. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Let me ask you something. Yes. Is it possible that we could get Maxine's trainer on this show? I understand it's internationally renowned. He's, I would like to get him on here the 12th of December. He's, a, he's, he's an amazing man because not only does he train the dog, he trains the human being. He said the, the, the dog has more problems with the humans than the humans have with the dogs. Can you sign him up with Pelosi? <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> not bad. Malcolm, that's pretty witty. <laughs> to Frankly Joe which I don't have, so let me get it up there so I can read it. I forgot to try that. Here it goes. Four presidents were born in Massachusetts. John Adams, John Quincy Adams, Jeff K., and George Bush, 41. None served the second term. Calvin Coolidge was born in Vermont, was governor of Massachusetts, and the 30th president. If he chose not to run for re-election after serving six years. Of late, Massachusetts presidential nominees haven't fared well, Dukakis, Kerry, and Romney all lost. Nevertheless, Massachusetts aspirants keep trying. Seth Moulton's presidential bid flopped big time. <laughs> Elizabeth Warren has gained some traction. And now Obama's buddy, Deval Patrick, has entered the race. Hope and change is here to come. 781 780 9460. So I ask you, I guess, Deval Patrick, what do you think? I think as governor, he was over, over his head. That answers that question. Yeah. And you? I think Deval Patrick is the biggest joke going. That's two for two. And Ralph? I, I, you know, I, th I think that uh, it would be the greatest thing in the world for Trump that if he could possibly get the nomination, he can't. But if he could, he would bury him. It, it would be a slaughter. That's oath for three. And you? I don't even want to talk about his name. What about Maxine? Maxine said she's despicable. <laughs> <laughs> well, that answers that, folks. If you have anything to say about it, 781-780-9460 is our number. Devel Patrick has officially entered the race, nevertheless. So, let's get to the topic of the day, which is impeachment. The impeachment hearings, if we can put that graphic up there, facts or Fiction, or not fiction, fact or hearsay, basically, right? And I, I, I might add that uh, that's, that's an interesting point. And we get the other graphic, which kind of crystallizes it, and it says facts and hearsay. So explain to me, Malcolm, the difference between the two. The thing is, is if facts are you have documentation, you know that these things occurred. Hearsay is always, if you follow any court cases, Hearsay is insufficient evidence. Right. It cannot be entered into. So, a Ralph, you're an attorney in your other life. So, some, sometimes, sometimes hearsay can be used. Okay, so, sometimes it can be used. When? In, in such a case where, if I'm if I'm walk, walking up Union Street and I see so, so, somebody shot and, and and that that person dies and he tells me the name of the person that, that killed him, that can be used. That can be used in a court of law. That hearsay. That is hearsay, but it is admissible. Is Sometimes that hearsay? It is. I, think hearsay the, I think the rule admissible. of thumb for a hearsay to take actual penance is they have to have at least two people say the same thing. Exactly. Right. It has to be verified. But, th but that, that is, th that's there one There may be case. exceptions. That is one but of the exceptions. But the point of the matter is that fact right. is right. and right. is. Right. Is that right, Axe? It it's, it's indisputable, correct? But hearsay is disputable. The two You've people testifying yesterday was all hearsay. Everything they said so was hearsay. So the, 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 they're saying that the hearings yesterday was all hearsay? It was all hearsay. Yep. It was all choreographed. Also, the way the man was talking, he has an axe to grind. We have a little clip we're going to throw up there. It's a shot one. If we can put up the video uh, of the hearings. Shifty shift. So you could be wrong. I yield the rest of my time to uh, uh, Mr. Uh, thank you. Thank you, gentlemen, for yielding. Ambassador Taylor, uh, the, the gentleman asked uh, if you could be wrong. Were you wrong when you said you had a clear understanding that President Zelensky had to commit to an investigation of Biden's before the aid got released, and the aid got released and he didn't commit to an investigation? 
Mr. I was not wrong about what I told you, which is what I heard. That's all I've said. I've told you what I heard. And that's the point. What that's you heard did not happen. It didn't happen. You had three meetings with the guy. He could have told you. He didn't announce he was going to do an investigation before the aid happened. It's not just could it have been wrong. The fact is it was wrong because it didn't happen. The whole point was you had a clear understanding that aid will not get released unless there's a commitment. Not maybe, not I think the aid might happen and it's my hunch it's going to get released. You use clear language, clear understanding and commitment. And those two things didn't happen. So you had to be wrong. Ms. Jordan, the other thing that went on when that, when that assistance was on hold is we shook the confidence of a, of a close partner in our reliability. And that... That's not what this proceeding is about, Ambassador Taylor. The gentleman Taylor. has expired. Ambassador That's Taylor, not what this whole thing started on. time of the gentleman has expired. Ambassador Taylor, did you want to finish your answer? No, that's good, Mr. Chairman. Um, I now recognize Mr. Carson for five minutes. That's the essence of the whole argument, is it not? A absol absolutely. That little clip. But the thing of it is, if you just hear his tone of voice, if you watch his facial expressions and his mannerisms, he came there with an axe to grind. Right. You're talking yeah. about Taylor. Yes. I agree. I mm -hmm. thought that his body language he's, was telling. He's not stating facts. He's telling you, this man pissed me off. I want him to go. And why did he piss him off, do you think? Because he undermined him. And he didn't he, undermine him. What he did, in effect, was he sent the Vice President of the United States to Warsaw, correct? Along with the Ambassador to the United Nations and along with the Secretary of State Pompeo to negotiate the transfer to make sure to verify. See, they cannot release any of that armament to the Ukraine unless they met certain conditions. But don't you and they had to certify that they were not corrupt. Right. Ex ex exactly, but don't you call that undermining Mr. Taylor? Well, Mr. Taylor didn't like that. Well, that's why I say Exactly, he that's my point. Yeah. So he was never in the loop. They asked him later on, have you ever met the president? And he hadn't. <laughs> yeah. And neither did Kent. <clears throat> the other and the other fellow, by the way, said categorically, and he actually sent the letter regarding Hunter Biden, uh, when he was, um, is my right? And, and he sent it to Vice President Biden, who was Vice President at the time, and you know what he got for response? Nada. At the same time, you know who hopes to God this doesn't reach impeachment status? Is, is Biden. Because then his son is going to be called in to testify. No question and about he that. he's going to be disgraced for the rest of his life. Well, it, it, it goes more than that. I mean, the fellows and the folks who are jumping in, Bloom, do you think Bloomberg, by the way, is going to uh, actually uh, pursue this? Probably. Hey, what about he's you, Malcolm? A, he's already filed in one Do you state. think he's going oh, to think it's a trial run? Um, Let me hear it from you guys. I, I think, think he's, he's basically floating a balloon. He, he's got a tremendous amount of capital to burn. That's right. And when you have a tremendous amount of capital to burn, he's, gonna, he's, he's going in. He, he How could, successful he will be, I do not know. He, he could get some of the polo pony Republicans to vote for him, but very few. I, I don't think it would upset the, the, uh, the electoral Those college Republicans aren't, weren't going to vote right. for Trump to right. start with. Right. You know what I mean, the polo pony. Yeah, there's about 2%. You're talking about Romney uh, and McCain, right. that, tri that yeah, tribe? That tribe, right. Yeah, Romney they're, they're, is a joke. Of course he is. And by the way, have any of you noticed that uh, Huntsman is running for governor of Utah again? He was the former ambassador to Russia under Trump. Right. 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 781-780-9460. So our poll question this week is very simple. Did President Trump commit an impeachable offense? And that's what it comes no, down to. No. Did he or did he not, in your opinion, 781-780-9460, or go on our website. And how come and this whole thing has to do with this whistleblower. And every, Eric Cherimetta is, is the whistleblower. And why doesn't anyone say his name? Everybody but, knows it. Everybody knows Cherimetta is, is the whistleblower. But, but didn't, no Molly, didn't Molly Hemingway mention that on Fox News and they vilified her? Yes. Okay. Why? Because supposedly you can't say his name, but I, but tell I did, me about I did the Sixth Amendment. Listen, he, his name's supposed to go forward because this, this what they're doing now is is a criminal proceeding. It's the same thing as a criminal. No, it proceeding. isn't and because say, hearsay yes, it is. is not admissible. Anything that happened right. yesterday would not have been admissible right. in a court of right. law. Is that right, Ira? Yep. 
I'm not a lawyer, but it, uh, you make a good point. The Sixth yes, Amendment. You're a man of religion. The Sixth mm -hmm. Amendment says that you have a right to face your mm -hmm. your accuser. That's the Sixth, right? The Sixth Amendment. That's right. And and and, right. and and Trump has a right to face Chirimetta. And and and. It, 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 Trump is actually on trial right now, and Chir they, Chirimetta has to be brought forward. They should go to the Supreme Court and get an well, interlocutory. Well, go one step further. Why you don't you give us a rundown of what his profile is? Well, this Chirimetta, this guy, he, he worked, worked in the CIA. Uh, Obama brought him in to work in the Intelligence Department in, inside the White House. Who was his mentor? Uh, his, his How about John Brennan? Let, let me, let, let me, let's he go worked. wait. To, let's get right there. Instead of you bobbing and weaving, okay. he is an acolyte. Is that the word? No. Yes. It is. Acolyte. Of John Brennan, right. right? Right. He also was a big fan of Hillary Clinton, wasn't he? Yes. He invested much. money, right. time, and effort. Right. He also worked on with or with the Ukrainians right. to craft right. the dossier. Did he not? Right. Yeah. He, so, he was in on the whole thing from the beginning of, of, the, of the whole. Uh, and here's the guy. That's the whistleblower, and nobody can question right. his motive. Right. Alleged whistleblower, right. but in effect, he's not a whistleblower, is he? Well, because not none of the facts that that he has stated or or, or or accusing Trump of have come to fruition. Not only didn't they come to wish fruition, it was all over a phone call, the transcript of which Trump released, which drove them absolutely bananas. And that was the end of that little number. And in the meantime, what's happening to our country, Malcolm? It's falling apart. As a consequence, yeah, I mean they're pitting people against each other unnecessarily. They're, they're That's a strange a thing. War. The country is really not falling apart because, strangely as this may seem, what basis is the is the country doing well? The stock market is going through the roof. Not only that, it's going through the roof. Yesterday, yesterday, the only thing that's really solidifying is support for Trump. Well, yesterday, yesterday, when it was the lowest of the low, when they had the impeachment trial actually come forward, the, start, the market went up 100 points. And I'll tell you why. Most people are not paying attention to this. Why? Why because aren't they paying attention because to Because it? it doesn't affect them. They don't care and about it. Is there a sense of fairness? Hell no. Right. Well, well, I, was this on regular TV? I was I was at the hospital almost all day yesterday. Was this on regular TV? Yeah, you could get it. You could get it on regular TV. Yeah, you could get I, it on I, website. I, it was all over the it place. It was all over the yeah. place. I, I didn't think so. I never, I, let's go back to that poll question, uh, Pedro. If you would, put we up are one more close time. to don't don't pass it by so fast. We are close to breaking twenty eight thousand on the stock market. Okay, that's amazing. Of course it is, and and our, and our relationship. See, here's another thing. Trump was saying to the Europeans and NATO in particular, how come you're not pointing up and helping out the Ukraine and you want us to do it? And by the way, this came out in testimony. Do you know what, a, there it is. Did President Trump commit an impeachable, uh, impeachable, yeah, impeachable offense? Impeachable. That's our poll question. Put it down, let us know. Are you aware of the fact that Obama refused to send them military, uh, you know, javelin missiles or any armament whatsoever? Are you aware of that? Refused to do that. He sent them blankets. Oh, telephone. Telephone. Oh, phone? someone on the phone, huh? Really? Who might that be? Hi, good evening. Hey. Hey, can yeah. you hear me? Yeah. Hey, this is Demetrius. Demetrius? What was that? Go ahead, Demetrius. Go ahead. Hey, what's going on? Well, what's going on is we're trying to figure out what you want to talk about. The worst five hours of television I ever went through yesterday. And what did you think? It was boring. Was it, did you think that there was anything impeachable about that five hours? Oh, heck no. Are you <laughs> kidding? So tell me what you thought. Give me your impression. And uh, Avram said that the body language of Taylor was telling. Did you find it that way? No, I just found him boring. There was really nothing there. Well, there, there was really, there was really nothing there. There was, it was like the Russian collusion. Nothing there. Yeah. I guess that says it all. All right, thank you, yeah. Demetrius. Thank you. Thanks for the call. Yeah. No problem. Seven eight one. 780-9460. Anybody would like to give us a call? Now, give us a I, I a this is a last-ditch effort by the Democratic Party to try to get rid of Trump because they know perfectly well there is not one single candidate now in between or, 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 or coming down the road that can beat him. 
I'm, I'm, not so sure, I'm not so sure the election is in the bag like you people who? are. Well, I, I study this thing very carefully. And? I don't like... I don't like a lot of these districts that, that, that had gone for Trump. I'm not so sure they're going to go for Trump this time. And uh, we're losing 20 more uh, Republican, uh, in, in Republicans no, in the House. No, we're not. are safe districts. They're, they're the safe ones, districts, the but, ones that you retired know, are in safe districts. You know, w w when you're under 10 percent, you're not safe. That's what I feel. You know? If you just base it on that, I can see what you're saying. But yeah. relatively speaking, Trump's got nothing to worry about. He's a shoo-in. Uh, I'm not so sure. Anyway, the thing is, you, you've got a lot of people out there that are supporting Trump that are not publicly saying that because they're afraid. It's of the called the sal It's called the silent majority. Yeah. yeah. Well, they wait a minute. We're going to do last week's polls now. that he threw up there. The first two polls is: Is Lynn hungry for change? Seventy-nine percent of the people said no. That it's not hungry for change. It's status quo. And they predicate that on the fact of the elections. Nothing happened, right? right? right. Oh, oh, let me say something. Well, seventy-nine percent is that the account, the uh, city council vote? <laughs> the other poll result had to do with are we going in the right direction? Fifty-nine percent said no. Forty-one percent yes. That's pretty. That's more optimistic, don't you think? I told you oh. about a young man I met who works at Dunkin' Donuts. Yeah, you told me. Garbage. Got a scholarship to go to a Catholic school. Okay. St. John's Prep. Yep. Every time I would see him, I would have a little conversation. I said, go, go to the library, take out books and this and that. We'd have a, uh, like a conversation. I'm walking down the street the other day carrying my dog, and this car stops. And who is it? It's the kid and his father. And his father says to me, my son's told me about you. You're talking, you tell him to go to the library and this and that. Thank you ever so much. And I happened to say to him, to conclude the conversation, did you go to vote? He says, vote for what? I said, the city of Lynn had an election. Did you vote? He said, are you serious? They do nothing for me. This is the same, thing I, the same thing I got at Wendy's when I had my lunch with, my, with two of my friends. They didn't vote either. And they're long-time Lynn people. And, and they, they used to vote all the time, but they've given up. They just that's think nothing he, ever he happens. That's why he said. Well, I think that's, that, you know, that to sad. me makes it's zero sad. sense. I know it makes uh, well, no sense. It's sad, but it's a true fact. Right. People are fed up with what's going on. But that's why these being people, fed up doesn't mean you don't vote. It's the opposite. You should become active. <laughs> these yeah, people, because because, because there's no publicity about it. There's no of newspapers course. screaming and yelling. That's right. And that's by design. That's why these guys get into office all the time and have a paycheck for the rest of their life. In the meantime, who doesn't have a paycheck are the folks that worked for Demetri's. Because oh, yeah. out of nowhere, suddenly and as you Close can see, shop. take a look at the sign on the door. Sorry, we are closed, out of business. I know that place. What, what, what happened? Who knows? I don't know. They just didn't yeah. make it. They yeah. started, it, the, the, the warning signs was when they put down Sutton Street. Remember the one right. where, the, uh, where their factory is? Yep. Yeah. 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 That shut down about a year ago? That's right. been there a long yeah. time, though, no? Yes, this had been 20-some yeah. odd years. Yeah. Right. And well, they had, the little, little they had that little coffee shop kind of thing in, on, in Central on Central, didn't they? And they closed that. Yeah. The one on Sutton Street. On, on Sutton, that's Sutton that's Street. They that's closed Sutton, that. Right. But my granddaughters and a lot of my students right. work for them part-time throughout their teen right. years. And right. they loved them. They were well-treated. They could yeah. go to the Wakefield right. store, which did very well. I'm, I'm a little suspect that when they expanded, when Lynn tried to entice them, yeah. And they moved down to Sutton Street, Sutton Street. and put they, the factory they, they, next they, to Rosetti's. did they do Rosetti's. a lot of work in there to fix that place well, up? Well, what I think they did was sometimes when you get too big, you expand, yeah. bad things happen. Right. And at that point in time, they sold wisely at their peak. Mm -hmm. And the folks who took it over just they couldn't They might have had it. a lease at that Sutton place. They might have had a lease they had to keep paying on, too, after Last they closed but not least, that is that a great location? No, it's not. No, but the product was really good. I Yes, it was, but there's a, it's not a great location. No, it was an old bank. Remember, a bank that went out of business, right? And everybody says they were doing the volume, which maybe means that maybe bakeries don't make, make the money we think they make. Well, let me put it this way. A lot of bakeries around turned around and said, I, I want these employees. I'll hire them. That's the good news. Right. The good news is, is many of the 40 or 50 folks, I think, lost their jobs. Oh, wow. That's in the all locations. And what others are saying, have them come down to see me mm -hmm. because I could use your help. And that's a good thing. So yeah. anybody that worked at Demetri's is looking to, you know, get gainfully employed again, mm -hmm. 
by all means, go uh, right. take that, some of these local that, that bakeries. Russian up. bakery next to Cal's, they, they closed, too. They were, they were open for a few years, and they, they, had, they had a pretty decent product, and they closed. How is the new bagel place doing? The new ba I, I just got some bagels last week. But are, are they and doing they're coming out with a new bagel sandwich. But how are they doing? That, uh, it's Good not question. a bagel sandwich. It, it's, a, it's made out of the wheat bread. <laughs> Meanwhile, you haven't told Let us how they're doing. Them. They're doing very well, as far as so I know. why are they successful? Well, they... Well, they I, I think, think they do some wholesale. Well, they, the bakery did wholesale too, of course, but uh, I don't know why. I, I have no idea why. I don't because know they they're only open until 2 o'clock. Well, and they farm out some of the stuff they make. They wholesale it and farm it out, correct? Right. And they're coming out okay. with a new sandwich, they told me. So they, well, the point is, is that they're not overloaded with a lot of hours. Right. They don't have a lot of labor costs, and they do charge pretty handsome. For a bagel, they're, they're, I think the bagels yeah. are a buck seventy or something, something that's like that. That's a lot of that's money for a bagel. But, but but I only eat half. It's, it, they're too big, so I eat half of them. Yeah. So in other words, at three fifty. Well, no, will, no, no, half half, no. will they be here two years from now? You don't teach math, do you? I hope not. Jesus. You know. think they will be? I don't know. I'm fascinated by what's happening on in uh, Sears Ward on uh, Saint Clair Street. Do you know what St. Clair Street is, uh, Malcolm? Mm, not really. Do you, uh, Ralph? I don't know where it is. It's in Ward 3, Ward and it's three. by the Swampscott Line. Okay. All right. Now, there was a three-family there. Let me give you some stats on it, and then I want to try to break this down because the folks out there better get it. You know, the neighbors finally got up in arms. This is democracy in action where the neighbors bitched. About what? About what was happening at this location. A three-family on 16 to 18 St. Clair Street is disrupting the neighborhood. Center Board, never heard of them, a nonprofit placed the tenants there through an agreement with the landlord. Uh, this sounds a lot like the United Nations that designated the city of Lynn as a refugee city, and the State Department complied with it without anybody in the yeah. city of Lynn having any input in it whatsoever. So this neighborhood got neighbors that never asked for well, This is like all the Somalians that end up in Minnesota, you know, Minneapolis, same deal. And this is what people are rallying against. Although the children live in Lynn, gets this one, they are being bused out of districts to out of district schools. You know how many buses come up there every day? Four or up, five, up I heard. Six. Six. Well, six. Well. And they start at right. 5.50 and they run until 8 right. o'clock. Right. And if the kid isn't there, they beep their horns in order for the kids to come down because the parents don't have their kids ready, all right? So the neighbors aren't sleeping. So between 5.50 and 8 a.m., six buses keep beep and sound their horns when parents don't have their children ready. And the honking can last up to 15 minutes. Now, That's only part of it. But who pays for this? Is Lynn paying for these the buses to go? To, to bring, they, they must because they're Let me ask you a simple question. Go ahead. I'm a simple If we man, had Bill ahead. Newell here, who lives yeah. in the hunt, right. Does Nahan have a high school? No. No. So where do the kids from Nahan go? They, they go, go to Swampscott. Swamp they go to Swampscott now. They, they used, used to go to Lynn, I believe. They went to classical they English, to had Swampscott. their choice. Right. Do you think the Swampscott says, thank you very much, we love having your students? Or do they say, oh, by the way, here's the bill? Well, they get paid. Okay. Who pays them? Lynn. I mean, I mean the Nahan. The of course. Pays them. Right, right. So you're asking about this here? Right. So These kids are being bused, wherever they're being bused to. Right. You know who's paying for that? Lynn. Lynn. Lynn, Lynn School where Department. Where are they being bused hold it. And they're also paying for the buses. Right. But where are they being bused to? Outside of I Lynn? have no I idea. I don't know. I don't know either. Nobody asks questions. There's, there's, a, street no point. there's a street in Ward 5 that, the, that buses, these little limo buses, those little, little ones, they keep going up there constantly all morning long taking kids somewhere. I have no but idea. But here's the critical point, Ralph. The critical point is, is that a neighborhood, individuals were put into a neighborhood by a nonprofit third party. Right. There's nine bedrooms in that house. Nine bedrooms, three baths. Right. That's a problem in itself, right? Three baths and nine bedrooms. Mm -hmm. So who lives there? Well, a lot of kids must live there if they get six buses going there in the oh, morning, yeah. right? A lot of kids must okay. live there. Now, they're being placed there. Why do you think they're being placed there by a nonprofit? Because they, they have no money. They have, they, do they? Well... We don't know if they have good money. Well, board, we don't know if they're legal or illegal. We don't know anything about them. Center that's board the problem. Care of those people. Is the nonprofit getting any funding from the federal government? I suppose. Yeah, I guess. And I suppose that the for landlord is very happy about it because you know what? I happen to look up looking for that address. I happen to look up that street address. And guess what? That three family is for sale. How much do you think they want for that three family on St. Clair Let Street? Let me take a guess. $700,000. That's right. $700,000. Okay. I just, that was just a guess. Okay. So can you imagine 
the type of money that he's got guaranteed regardless of what the condition is. Now the neighbors are also complaining because at nighttime loud music, syringes, rowdy, waste, and rubbish. Right. The, Not the, very neighborly. Yes. The worst thing that this city needs is absentee landlords. That's exactly right. And you know, I have to give Darren Sear, the council president, and perhaps this is why he increased his margin and did a wonderful job in the final election, because he took action. Yeah, you've got, he, he had to. But he, that's right, that's a good point, because what happened? The neighbors it's, complained. They were yeah. loud and critical. We're not taking this, you know, this was a Howard Beale moment. Yeah. Nobody, I'm nobody damn wants sick and tired, I'm not going to take it anymore. All these so when you talk to me about your friends that didn't vote, shame on them. I know. It, it, but 80% but didn't vote. Shame on So them. there were a lot of people that Shame didn't on vote. them. And I, the people on St. Clair Street, I applaud you for having the courage mm. to stand up for what you believe in mm. and take the consequences. You say shame on them. Basically, to some people, possibly, yes. Most of these people got two and three jobs, have no time to go to, to vote. That's right. I suspect that the people we're talking about these tenement houses don't have jobs at all. I don't know. Well, you've yeah. also got absentee ballots. Yeah, well, all right, so there's really, really no excuse. That they I don't even the think these people would know what that word meant if you told it to them. 781-780-9460. So anybody knows anything you about know the St. Clair Street situation, give us a call. Anyways, if you're always late, guess what? The study shows that you live longer. Would you believe this one? Let's get that graphic up there. Holy, yeah. I write, you're going to 100. <laughs> All right? yeah, yeah. Always late, late study says food. long life. Let's throw that little clip up there and let the people see what it all has to say about this. The early bird, forget the early bird, and forget the worm. People who are always late aren't just rude, turns out they are actually more successful and creative. Having a somewhat disconnected sense of time can be linked to optimism, a type B personality, and a tendency to multitask at home and at the office. Arguably, all positive traits. Multitasking has a tendency to make you lose all sense of time. Researcher Jeff Conti from the psych department at SDSU sought to explore this phenomenon and found that those who preferred multitasking relate to their jobs more often than those who don't. Furthermore, B personality types aren't as organized and competitive as A types, but are considered to be more creative, laid back, and innovative individuals who have a much more lax perception of time. Optimists tend to believe they have more time on their hands than they actually do, and a tendency to look at the bigger picture rather than getting caught up in every detail of everyday life is what entrepreneurs, thought leaders, and artistic visionaries are made of. So what if you miss an appointment here or there? You are actually a visionary. So to all you latecomers out there, rejoice. You just may change the world someday. Now, Avram, does that describe the rabbi? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> you told me he's late. He's chronically late. The most <laughs> unbelievable vision I have in my life is may my mother rest in peace. We were going to my, to my mother's funeral. And the little limousine picked me up and a friend of mine. And we're waiting for Ira because he's coming in the limousine with me. And uh, we're waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting, and finally the limousine drives us, we, we have to go. Oh, God, no. So this car starts to take off, and all of a sudden the girl stands up, wait, there's someone coming. We turn around, there's Reb Axford running down the street. <laughs> running down the street. That's a vision I have. Honest to God, thank God you showed up. We have another video, uh, if we can put it up there, on the same basic subject. 781-780-9460. Can, can I give you an interesting comment, John? Right after this video, okay. of course. And we got that up there. Uh, we have a second one. We're hoping to get it up there anyhow. Uh, and well, why don't you tell us until we oh, get okay. it up there? People say the early bird catches the worm. Yeah. We say it differently. If the worm wouldn't have been early, it wouldn't have been caught. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Pedro, do we or don't we have that? If we don't, we can move on. Uh, you know, well, the rabbi sent me a long, uh, long letter, and it was, it was really touching. And in that letter, I came to find out that he has a hero, and it isn't you. <laughs> you know who it is? Who? Maxine. George Bernard Shaw. Yeah, you're right. We, we, yeah. So we decided here at Frankly Speaking to honor the rabbi, <laughs> and we got a, a few quotes from George Bernard Shaw. Oh, what about the clip uh, he's put telling me about it? So if we can put that up in the meantime, we can always get back to the 
clip or the video whenever you want to, uh, Pedro. But the uh, the thing on George Bernard Shura, the graphic, if we have that, can we clip that up there and comment on it? Uh, how's it working? Is it working? You better read. I hope you watched that. I watched it. I watched it. I watched it. <laughs> Does that describe you at all? To a very large degree, yes. You think? Yes. A creative? Yes. Yes. Huh? Passionate? Yeah. Optimistic? Yes. Are you optimistic? Yeah, to a degree, yeah. And, and by the way, I happen to have very low blood pressure. On top of it. Yeah. Well, that's because when you're late, you have to run and you carry your legs. <laughs> <laughs> I, I find the best thing is that's like, your, like that's your cardio I, I exercise. A, I, I had an appointment yesterday, <laughs> but I, I take the earlier train just because I, I want to relax and, and go to go to North Station, maybe maybe play some numbers there and go to the bathroom and and, and uh, look around and then then, then t take my rapid transit in, into the hospital. But I, it's enjoyable to me. I be and, and I like what. But I'm, I'm, no, not being late. I'm not being late. I'm, I'm going a little bit ahead of time so I can relax. I'm not rushing. I'm not moving fast. All right. Okay. Like and all these. So your cardiovascular can't be that good, then, huh? Uh, my pressure was a little high yesterday, actually. Yeah, <laughs> it was. Yeah. Maybe, maybe, maybe you should get, get me more. late for things, huh? Yeah, maybe I should be late for. So, everything. Malcolm, you said you're kind of in the middle there, huh? Yeah, so so. It, it depends upon the situation. You have a dog. Doug gives you responsibilities, doesn't oh, it? Oh, yeah, and then, and then some. <laughs> but you Do see, you, I come from a family. If they say, be here at 3 o'clock, we come a half an hour early. And if you come 10 minutes before you're supposed to be there, we're, we're, already, we're already angry. <laughs> you must be in truffle, trouble with the... Uh, the Peters family, huh? Of course. <laughs> Constantly. <laughs> well, you became a great track star. You became kind of what? You became a great track star. When I was in high school, they, they looked at my legs and they wanted to be on the track team. I told them, no, too much time commitment. Really? Yeah. 781 780 is our number here. George Bernard Shaw, if you can find that graphic, let's chuck that up there because he said some profound things, by the way. And here it is. He said, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. Oh, yes. <laughs> Guys, you want to comment on any of that? The road to hell is paved with good intentions. I've used that you phrase You had one, Avram, that I hadn't thought about. What was it? Youth is wasted on the young. Yeah. It certainly is, is, isn't it? Which is a very prolific statement. Beware of false knowledge. It's more dangerous than ignorance. Yeah, you Could, see, be. Could be. That is really applying to what's going on in Washington right now. So that's applicable. Absolutely. Give me a time date on George Bernard Shaw. 19th century, roughly, was, uh, he, he was uh, Oscar Wilde. He lived 94 years, and he died in 1950, so he was born in 1856. Really? So he had a big, long life. Wow. Maybe he was late. Possible. <laughs> Science never saw Well, a after he died, he became known as the late Mr. Shaw. <laughs> <laughs> Science never solves a problem without creating ten more. I think that is profoundly, mm -hmm. uh, you know, that makes a lot of sense yeah. to me. Mm -hmm. So, listen to this one, Ralph. A government that robs Peter to pay Paul can always, always depend on the support of Paul. That's right. 
Huh? Yeah. And that's what's happening in our country today, isn't it? Mm -hmm. yeah. Every day of the right. week. Right? So what's happening is, is that Elizabeth Warren is telling Paul, I'm going to take everything from Peter yeah. and give it to you. And Paul says, oh, thank you thank very you. much, well, a.k.a. millennials. Our problem is we're in such a deficit. We think that everyone in the government thinks they, they can just keep extending it and, write, and writing, writing uh, electronic checks every week to pay, pay for all the deficits. Every month we're at a deficit, and every month electronically we pay our bill. We put money in banks. The, the way it works is really interesting. The Federal Reserve, uh, the, the day That's before the That's not part first, of the government. The Fed, well, I know, but, this is, but the Federal Reserve controls the money supply. The Federal Reserve electronically puts into three different commercial banks that feed all, you know, the military and feed our okay, social security I'm check. Okay, and, and, and with, they do that electronically without any real money in the bank. There's no movement of money. There's actually just electronic movement of money that isn't there. And what they do is they do an accounting thing later on. They do their borrowing, everything else, and they're rather... So answer me the, money. Answer really me the interesting question. How they do it. When did the Federal Reserve come into existence? Uh, about uh, a little after... Uh, after Roosevelt. Uh, when Roosevelt was in. After Woodrow Roosevelt. Wilson. Woodrow Wilson. Woodrow Wilson. hundred years. hundred years right. ago. Okay, right, right. So the Federal Reserve Bank, right. for a few folks out there, is not part of the government. They're an independent agency separate from, although the government has someone on their board of directors. Right. Now, this is a classic battle that took place right. way back with right. Nicholas Biddle and, and Andrew Jackson, right? And Andrew Jackson did not particularly like the National Bank, which Alexander Hamilton loved, correct? This battle has been going on from day one. Now, there are those who understood that debt is a wonderful thing. Interest is great. 5%, oh my God, you make a fortune, right? Guess who never borrowed from the Federal Reserve banking system? F JFK didn't. When we well, he, let's well. clarify that he wasn't in office long enough to get the chance to. That's true. Yeah. Mm. That's, but George Bush, the, old, the younger, didn't borrow from the he, Federal Reserve Bank I, I either. Th I think there was a deficit at that time. But the, who? In, in, in John Kennedy's reign, I think there was a deficit but, but there was there was a um, there was a debt, but no deficit. He did he had not. A he he refused to. He refused to borrow because he didn't want to pay the juice. Okay. Did you borrow money for the. Did you say the word juice or Jews? I said juice. Okay. Juice, you know, like like orange, uh -huh. orange juice, juice. Uh -huh. juice, juice right. okay. He didn't want to pay the juice. Power, by the way, folks, does not corrupt men. Fools, however, if they get into a position of power, corrupt power. You shook your head. Yeah. I Comment can. on that. No. Because your buddy, your yeah, hero. No. I can agree with it. I can agree with a lot of the stuff. There were some other ones that he said that I missed. What, what were some of his other One things? of those, and with all due respect, uh, he said you were a teacher. <laughs> they say, uh, those who can't do, those who can't teach. Teach. There's a lot of truth to that. Yeah. Uh, let me think of some of the other ones. Um, well, Bum, of course, brought up that one about... Uh, 781-780-9460. I'll, I'll tell you a funny story about it. Sure. I like your Churchill. funny stories. Everybody wants to hear your funny stories. Yeah, a story stories. about him and Churchill. They had a certain rivalry. <clears throat> At that time in London, it was a custom that the, a person had a new play, a major play coming, opening up in London. He sends two tickets to the Prime Minister for the opening night. So Shaw had a play going in, and he sends Churchill two tickets for you for opening night, for you and a friend, if you have one. Churchill sends back a note to Shaw. Can't make opening night. We'll come second night if there is one. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. You know, so you mentioned Churchill, right? What's fascinating, and this, this is troubling to me, too, and this is why I, sometimes I wonder. Churchill did yeoman stuff for the UK, right? Yeah. Uh, and his reward was they threw him out of office defeated. in 1950. He, he, he got defeated. 45. 45. And do you know what the reason was? Did you you know tell why? me. He got, he got defeated because he stopped talking about going to war against communism and the people of England because they had gone through so much, so, dep so much depravity during the, during the Second World War. They didn't want to go into war again. They, they, wanted, they wanted to get something back for themselves. And he was promising them m more suffering. And if you remember in his speeches... That's all he talked about is going after communism. He's the one that coined the phrase Yang Curtin. Yeah, I mean, yeah, right. He did yeah. that in yeah. where? What, what state? But, but here, here's states. where I'm going to... Telephone call. Oh. Someone's on the phone. Yeah. Hi, good evening. Who, uh, who might this be? This is Paul. 
Paul, how are you? Oh, hi, guys. I just wanted to call up and tell you that uh, I went out yesterday and I was very amused by what I saw on Western Avenue. Uh, you know, my friend Pat McGrath, he built a uh, 24 uh, units of uh, condos down at uh, the old flower shop there at 673 Western Ave. Well, I drove through the parking lot that I saw that used to be there two years ago, and I see a beautiful building now that 23 out of 24 condos are sold already. Okay, because he went out, he got a good real estate to sell them for him, Tiva Julio. He sold 23 out of 24 in not even a year. Okay, another eyesore gone, another icon did a good job from when. Now I want to say this, an open invitation to Mayor McGee. Mr. McGee, you owe Pat McGrath an apology. This man should be able to build that storage facility on Blossom Street. It's behind houses on Blossom Street. Businesses, you've got a lousy smoke shop down the street that's selling pot, and you ain't going to let a guy put a nice storage facility A1 condition. Now, a guy that's proven win man that built everything here, you're not going to let him build a storage facility that's going to bring in $800,000 a year in the tax roll? Shame on you. That's it, guys. Good night. Don't you go anywhere. Are you there? He's already gone. Right. He's gone. But he, you know, he, he, he really is a great spokesman for right. Pat McGrath, he but does. he makes a great point. Of course he makes a good but point. But the thing of it is, and I, I, I'm just, I, this is what I think. I don't have no, no, no proof of it. I don't think that the powers to be in this city like Pat McGrath. Well, I think that's pretty and, obvious. And it probably has a lot to do with a jealousy. Right. Now, now, the area... Which the word is envy, yeah. yeah. Right. The yeah. area we're talking about, everybody has to understand it's a, it's a commercial area we're talking about. You're talking about for the storage. For, for the storage. It, it, it was a, a, trans, a truck transmission place before yeah. that moved, all right? And, and it's all around areas where there's all kinds of uh, 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 fix-it shops for cars everywhere, okay? Back up. There's only one residential house across the street from it, I believe. And maybe up on the corner, there, there's a uh, an apartment apartment building. But basically, it's all it, it touches all commercial areas. It's not even near the Linway. I mean, it's it, near, but it, it, it does not but, face the Linway. No, it's not no, 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 the Linway. No, okay, no, no. and that that was the argument that was made that it didn't fit right. into our plan. Well, that's because it's not part of the plan right. ge geographically to start with. But it must be zone commercial, though. What else could it be? Of course, it's zone. Course it's zone the whole area is commercially. That's zone. all irrelevant. I'm telling you, they yeah. don't. Whatever the reason, they don't want to see the guy do well. I want to get back to. Maybe he's not I want to get back to impeachment for a second. I, I never hear seven eight one seven eight zero nine four six. So, you had a unique take uh, on the uh, hearings, yes. from what I understand. Yes. Could you share that with us? Yes. I'm going to sort of uh, swap in my uh, clerical hat for the hat of a political analyst, which I was for many years. Uh huh. Okay. I don't see where anybody would really want the impeachment if they understood the consequences. Be careful what you wish for. Let's start with the Democrats. Now, let us, now the impeachment's going to go nowhere. The Senate Republicans will kill it. We know that. But let's take a flight of fancy. Let us say, yes. Trump gets impeached. So what happens? Mike Pence becomes president. I have friends in Indiana where he was governor. I asked them about him. He was a nice guy, well-liked, and got a lot accomplished. Now, the Democrats are going to be a little embarrassed about, well, you know, we block Trump on everything. They've got to show that they're, they're cooperating. Mike Pence is a nice guy. It is an old saying, you can catch a lot more insects with honey than with flypaper. I can guarantee you, if Pence would become president, he will get a strong conservative agenda through that Trump, with two houses of Congress being Republican a couple of years ago, couldn't get through. People didn't like Trump. They will like Pence. And Pence, who is a conservative ideologue, will get that through. The Democrats will be shocked. So I don't see where any of them would want Pence. But take a look at the Republicans now. <clears throat> Did anybody bother reading the Constitution? If the, if the vice president becomes president, the 25th Amendment says the president shall appoint a new vice president with the majority of each House of Congress. Now, that far the Democrats will not go along with Pence. So there will be a vacancy for a long time. Talking about for vice president. For vice president. Yep. Now, do you know who is next in line for that Nancy vice presidency? Pelosi. The Speaker of the House, yep. Nancy Pelosi. I would think every Republican would 
shudder at the thought of her being a heartbeat away from the presidency. Let and I would think that they that. would want to work very hard to make sure that, that doesn't happen. Let me qualify that. I don't think it's every Republican. I think it's every thinking, sane human being would be terrified. <laughs> I'll of the agree fact with that too. That, uh, I would agree with I mean, that. that she I think some become, of the Democrats wouldn't yeah. like it either. Oh, well, I don't think it's ever going to. It, it, if you're impeached, it doesn't mean you, you have to leave office. It means you have to be tried in the Senate. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course, which won't happen. And, and that, that never would happen. The Senate. They need 68 votes, and they're not going to get it. I think it's 68. But from a political guy, point of view, think of it. We had a guy that was president of the United States that was being serviced in the Oval Office yeah. by an, a subordinate, a young girl. Right. Now, if that isn't the height of... Mo you're, you're a <laughs> rabbi. And they couldn't impeach him. Right. But he and you're going to tell me that they have, the, they have the stones right. to try right. to impeach somebody he wasn't impeached because on a for phone that. call? He, he wasn't impeached for that. He was, he was impeached for lying under oath. The that's true, he but is. the whole... He well, lied about... The, what I mean, is. what he did was talk about something that was disgraceful to the that, presidency. And, Nothing could be and worse than what that, he did. But, but people don't make mention of it. He was actually disbarred. He was yeah. disbarred. He was disbarred, okay? Same thing with Barack Obama. Barack hmm. Obama has been disbarred. Is, he was disbarred is that, years ago. Is, is that right, really? Absolutely. This, they had no idea. Him and his wife. On the, on, the, on the Clinton case, you know, there were things that he did which <clears> might have been impeachable. Uh, getting involved with the Chinese and certain selling certain things oh, no, that might not. have been impeachable. Oh. However, it was not. You'll pardon me, a sexy issue. The country could only understand the sexy issue with all the other stuff going on. So they picked, they had the right answer, but the wrong. The no, wrong I want to get back, uh, back to something that you said. You said the magic word that those folks out there and most people around the country aren't aware of, and it's that the Clintons pretty much sold this country down the tubes to China. The problems that we have with China today are directly related to what Bill Clinton did as President of the United States in U.S. relations with China, which we could say were treasonous as opposed to the Ukraine. Could be. Could be. But you can also say because of Donald Trump in office now, the Chinese have kept a very low vigil on what's going on in Hong Kong. Oh, of course. Fifteen yeah. years ago, there would have been 30, 40, 50,000 people killed immediately. Right now, I think there's been two people killed. Right. That's, that's too, too many, yeah. of What's course. Well, by the way, what happened in northern Syria? What's happened to the Kurds? Are the Kurds being annihilated? Are they being wiped out? It's not Are they being, being exterminated? It's not, it's, it's not being talked about. No, they Why? dropped that from the because, top Because news. we're too busy. But the deep state, Romney, right. and all the rest of them, Republican, Democrats, right. and the rest of them, they were saying, oh, oh, what a terrible, terrible thing he did. Did he? Who did he have in the White House? Yesterday, the head, of, the head of Turkey was in the White exactly. House. Exactly. What were they talking about? And they were talking about the careers and how how they're going to go going forward. What country has the second largest army in NATO next to us? Turkey. Exactly. Right. Are the Germans doing anything? Are no. the French doing anything? No. No. Are the British doing anything? No. no. Are the Turks? I, I think I think the French are uh, are. Uh, they're giving up. They're throwing their hands up in the air. Not, like they well, usually do. France has so many internal problems right now. That's the least Look of at it. their president. Okay. <laughs> look at their president. Him and Justin Trudeau should shake hands. You look at their president. I don't, no, don't want to look at their president. Okay. So, if we take a hard look at the reality and the geopolitical sense, Donald Trump, forget about the stock market, that's... That's amazing in itself, but what he's done geopolitically is incredible. He is saying that the Cold War mentality is over. No, but even simpler than that, black people for the first time in history have the lowest amount of unemployment ever. And the highest yeah. advancement. Okay, Obama did absolutely nothing for his own people. He did if, everything for himself. Basically, yeah. Well, he's got the mansion that he's moving into makes the White House look like a shanty. Yeah. <laughs> How do you make two hundred thousand dollars a year and all, all, all of a sudden have millions and millions of he's dollars? He's got book deals. He, you get book yeah. deals. You get these yeah. deals. Yeah, deals pay -offs. Pay -offs. yeah. <clears throat> a two pay million dollar contract. Yeah. 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 Well, that's a payoff. Yeah. yeah. But, but they're, they're, did they're, you, they're, that's they're, why I did you hear to about the, uh, the smash and grab story with the University of uh, Phoenix? Go ahead. You know that story? No. University of Phoenix, yeah. very, very, very large institution. Well, apparently, it got a lot of money from the government. Obama says, uh, I don't like it. I'm pulling the plug on that. So the University of Phoenix's stock drops like a rock in water. 
It's nice and low. A friend of Obama buys it. And then Obama says, oh, I rethought it. I will support it. Figure that one out. Well, <laughs> why should this shock you? <laughs> yeah. I'm just trying to look at what, the, what my defector. Absolutely. Defective. Brian, what are you writing up there? Trump you? I don't know what Trump you. <laughs> I, but I know one thing. Doesn't the deuce of Trumps beat the ace of spades? Basically, yes. Basically, yes. But, you know, let me, let me ask you a question. It's now already November, December, January, February. When is this impeachment going to come to an end? When the Senate votes it down. Not until then? Probably not. I, I still think that probably, most likely, there never will be an actual impeachment vote. Because I, I think the, Demo the, the Democrats... You're talking about the House of Representatives? Yes. It's not an impeachment vote. It's a vote to send it to the Senate. Right. I understand. And the Senate no, no, votes no, a no, trial. No, no, right. they, now, here's the problem. No, they actually Do you realize it. that there are so many senators running for president, say the Democrats, right. that they cannot speak? Right. They, their mouth is sealed. Right. But yeah. also... They yeah. don't like that. They can't go on the campaign trail. This is where Bloomberg and right. Deval Patrick are jumping in because... Uh, and the kid from... Uh, from India, right. uh, South Bend. South Bend. Yeah, Peter yeah. Yeah. Because they can talk all they want. But there's and in order to get the nomination in the Democratic primary, you have to kick the crap out of Trump because that's what the other... There's over 30 Democrats that could be in trouble if they, if they voted for impeachment. Believe me, they could be. Yeah. They're very, very... Yeah. They, they're they're already in, in a very marginal They're in swing districts. You're right. Situation. You're right. Very but they marginal. are already in trouble. Right. We have a phone call. How are you this evening? Hello? Hi, Joe. How are you doing? Thank you. Okay, I got a uh, I got a story about the city of Lynn that I think needs to be addressed. Uh, the uh, they say they want to hire thirteen firemen for public safety, twenty six police for public safety. I wish they would hire twenty six DPW workers for safety because my friend has a t uh, tree out in front of his house for the last five years, growing over his house. It's up to them to cut it down. They haven't cut it down in the four years of him complaining. They're gonna uh, they're gonna eliminate his insurance. Uh, my wife broke her ankle out on the front of my house this past winter because of the, the negligent sidewalk that needs to be fixed. Uh, for the last hundred years, there's been sewage dumping in the Kings Beach. Uh, do I need to go on? Oh, Thank you, Joe. Very legitimate point. There's no attention being paid to the DPW, and I hate to say this, way back when, when I had a little stint on the city council, they decided to separate the DPW and the Lynn Water Sewer Commission, if you remember correctly, the and they eviscerated the DPW. They've never really funded it properly yeah, yeah. ever since. And yeah. he, you're absolutely right. Thank you for that call. We got to do some. We better do a lot more right. on that. Yeah. You know, it's, they, really, what, it's, what cities need is I think they should have an elected official. I don't. I don't want to expand government. You could pull back in other areas, but electric, elect, elected official. That, that's an in, the city engineer, the, the head engineer of the city. And he, he would have powers over all of these things. Well, he, 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 in other words, who do you go to right now? You have to go to your water. If something's wrong, like, like they just the call, who do you go? You go to your water alderman. He has to go to water and sewer or whoever to, to fix it. But yeah, it's but limited. It, but it, it, still, it still becomes a political animal. The whole idea is the proper funding and the appreciation for how important infrastructure and the DPW is. He's absolutely right, correct. Right. Put, we got to get the comments. There. Dave Riley, the way I look at it, and this has to do with, and you guys got him up here because we're going to go through right. him. Right. Dave Riley said that uh, the way I look at it is yes, we definitely are. Move the right direction. Yeah. Uh, you look online and people talk about, and they say they do, but. Don't take the proper action. If everyone voted and voted for who they said online, the makeup of the council would absolutely be radically different. That's true. Uh, yes. And yeah. so the folks aren't getting out there. And by the way, congratulations, Dave. Uh, uh -huh. Dave the recently got married. Right. right. And he's in uh, marital bliss as we right. speak. I tell him. So, I, I told him this week on Facebook to go go see his wife and have a nice date with her. Actually. And the honeymoon is still on. It still well, is, yes. <laughs> Here's one of the great lines of all times. Only to stay home, he adds, and have ramen for the tenth time in a row. <laughs> Only amplify that by 75% of the city's population. I thought that was cute. <laughs> Mark Tranfagla had this to say. What did he say, Ralph? This past election proves they don't want change. Sad. And I think this is probably, Rabbi, this is yours. 
because Seth said it all. I mean, it is so wild what he's could listen. I mean, this is creative. Seth Alden. Seth. Okay. Do you, you want to read There's it? There's no way. Yeah. Wait, wait a minute. There's no way uh, Lynn can be like Hungary. We don't have the Danube, medical, medieval castles, and we're not landlocked. <laughs> <laughs> That's really a witty huh? What's that yeah, response? Yeah. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and Greg, Greg said, uh, Malcolm, what did Greg say there? Uh, not if you go by voter turnout. Laughing out loud. Yeah, and that all, all to do is Lynn going in the right direction, I guess. You know? yeah. Right. Yeah, Walter right. Carlson, I was at the Brothers Deli the other day on market and heard that a couple of the panelists are being abused. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. Do you know if anybody's being abused? Yeah, I know. There's do some, not like some guy that. that. Some guy yeah. that has a face for radio? Somebody, yeah. Uh, has do a not face like for that. Radio. that. You guys are great. I watch every week with a couple of Lynn guys, and you are the only ones bringing the truth to Lynn. Thank you, Walter, for bringing that right. out. You know, I met a guy that knows Walt. I'm going to see if we can see if he can get He's on the show sometime. Yeah. And our own famous Tim Fenton. What do you have to say? High-rise apartments going up in the city downtown is is cleaner than my memory recalls. The pot shops are a bigger non-issue than I know they would be. So he's saying things are moving in a better direction. Okay. Now, better than they were. We already did the results of our poll, but Walter Carlson, we need more Walter Carlson's. <laughs> I know we do. Yeah. yeah. But thanks, Again, Walter. I, I know some of you knows him. I'm going to see if we can get in contact. I think with he him. just said that about 30 seconds yeah, ago. I, I want to say it again because I think it's important. I think he should be on this. Can I ask you one so, question? What's that? Do you, do you know someone that knows Walter Carlson? No, I think so. Though. I'm not sure. I'll, I'll do say you know someone you. that knows Walter no, Carlson? I, no, no, I don't. Can How I, much time do we have left here? Throw that up there. Can I uh, give you a wisecrack about voting? Yeah. William Jennings Bryan ran three times for president, lost three times. Somebody once came up to him and said, Mr. Bryan, I voted for you three times. And Bryan looks at him and says, I trust was in three separate elections. Do we have a little time? I'd like to ask four minutes. I'd like to ask three minutes. That's right. Three minutes. I'd like to ask the rabbi a question. All right, ask the rabbi a question. Ask a question. I've been doing some reading this week, a little bit about religion. And they have the this thing called the nuns. Do you know what that means? Not the nuns, like the Catholic nuns with the... with the None of this, none of that. None of this, none of that. That the nuns, the people who do, do not believe in God, do not believe, do, do not have any religion. It was 17 percent of the whole country in 2009. In, two, in 2019, it's 26 percent. Over one out of every four people in the United States do not have religion and don't believe in God. And what do you think of that? That is very sad. Yeah? That's a that's from a Pew research. Uh, very sad. Yeah. So, what do you attribute that to? Uh, I. I, I Boy, Have you thought about why that's the case? I, you, you, it's very, very difficult. No, I, what I is think it? Be, well, this country is being secularized left and right. That's true. It's moved towards socialism, which is ultimately atheistic. Right. right. And that's the reason why. If we keep electing the people who have no faith base, you know, they also don't like Trump right. because guess what? He says, I believe in God, and God we trust, and right. this is a, mm -hmm. you know, not man's law, it's God's law. Mm -hmm. And they can't stand that, Rabbi, am and, I right? And That's he, right. He brought back religious freedom in this country, you, too. Exactly right. right. He also, Absolutely. He also and, and had that, Bible and, and religion, in the White well, House. Mm -hmm. is in competition mm -hmm. with government. Government does not like family and does not like religion right. because it wants total control. Right. So it destroys both. And you can take right. a look at the Great War right. on Poverty right. and what it's done to right. families. The lack of people having faith and religion has to do with the definite social breakdown of the immediate family. Mm. Of course it has, by, by design. Okay. By design. And academia are the biggest. Never more in the history of the world has the family suffered consequences of like going down the drain. Mm -hmm. Yes, okay. and government and government has been. See, when government becomes the nanny state, take a look at San Fran as we speak. Wrap up. Mm -hmm. so, and anybody that votes for Democrats got to be out of their mind. Take a look at what the Democrats have done to San Fran, LA, Chicago, Philly, Baltimore, and on Detroit, and on and on it goes. My dog trainer, who takes care of Maxie, said to me, "Any self-respecting Jew of them should never vote for the Democrats." <laughs> I couldn't believe he said that. Who did your dog vote for? Did your dog vote? My dog, a is, my dog is an independent. It's already over. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you think? Very nice. Yeah. What'd you think? Excellent. Did you like it? Good thing I saved Good. it.